Hey guys, what's up? This is Manas, your friend and tutor. And in today's video, we'll try to find the moment of inertia of a C section with respect to its own centroidal axis. Therefore, the first step is going to be very simple. We need to go ahead and find the exact location of the centroid. And in step number two, what we'll try to do is we'll try to find the MOI of the C section with respect to its own centroidal X and with respect to its own centroidal Y. Okay, so let's begin with step number one and what we need to do is we need to fill up this table and you can clearly see that this this entire C section has been divided into three parts. Now let me write this that let's say this is one and let's say this is two. Um, let's say this is three. Okay, so that's x1, x2, x3 and all these parameters need to be filled up for calculating the centroid. So how can that be done? So we've got this. Okay, the coordinate axis. And centroid for rectangle 1 is going to be somewhere here. And let's call this as G1. Centroid for rectangle 2 will be precisely here. Let's call this as G2. And whereas the centroid for rectangle 3 will be here. Let's say this is G3. Well, this is going to be X1. How much is X1? Half of 5. And that's 2.5. This is going to be X2. Okay. This is the precise location of centroid um, of rectangle 2. That's that's x2 my friends and the value of x2 is half of 1.5 so do half of 1.5 that's 0 0.75 so that's 0 0.75 and finally we have this again this is going to be what this is going to be x3 and x3 is equal to half of two half of five in fact well that's 2.5 let's 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 worry about these three parameters y1 y2 y3 well that's that's y1 and y1 is nothing but half of 1.5 that's 0 0.75 this over here is y2 right how can y2 be worked out well guys uh, just 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 think about this if we can somehow manage to work out this portion this dimension then we'll be able to work out the value of y2 because y2 is equal to this dimension over here plus 1.5 right how much is this if you watch carefully from here until we reach here how much is this this is 7 and let me tell you why this is 7. This is 10. So 10 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 that is 10 minus 3 will give you the value as 7. And half of 7 is nothing but 3.5. So this is 3.5 plus 1.5 and that's going to give you this value of y2 as 5 centimeters. Finally, we need to work out this. This is going to be y3. And in order to get the value of y3, this is how much? This is 10. So 10 minus this distance. This distance. This is how much? I'm talking about this distance that's um, half of 1.5 that is 0 0.75 so essentially it is 10 minus 0 0.75 that is this much and how much is it gonna be it's gonna be equal to 9.25 if I'm not wrong and there is a different approach which you can follow for this you can say half of 1.5 that is this distance is going to be 0 0.75 also so 0 0.75 plus this 7 plus 1.5 will also give you the value as 9.25 so it's it's that easy and now finally we need to go ahead and calculate the value of areas area of rectangle 1 5 cross 1.5 so 15 5 is 75 it's going to be 7.5 centimeters squares obviously now this is also a similar rectangle rather than identical rectangle so it's going to have same area 7.5 and this is having having a height of how much 7 this is 1.5 so 7 into 1.5 i'm not wrong it's 105, 10.5. Yes, let me check. 10.5. Yeah, that's 10.5. And you need to punch in all the values of of x, y's, and areas into these two formulas, and the final value of the x coordinate of the centroid, which I'm going to refer to as x bar and y bar, have worked out as. Let me check. It's going to be equal to 1.78 centimeters, and this is going to work out as 5 centimeters. Now, since since um, this C section is actually symmetrical about an X axis. So half of 10 will give you 5. Okay, we could have worked that out from that approach also. Now let me go ahead and approximately let us try to let us try to fix the centroid somewhere. So how much is the value of X C or X bar? It's 1.78. So this much is 1.5. So slightly ahead. Something like this. Right. This is going to be centroidal yy and what about the value of y bar it's going to be equal to 5 
it's going to be something like this yeah this is going to be centroidal x x this is centroidal y y and if i were to write this as the main centroid it is going to have coordinates in the form of x bar and y bar that is 1.75 let me write x bar comma y bar that's it that's it nothing else so we want to find the moment of inertia with respect to this centroidal x x we want to find the moment of inertia with respect to this centroidal y y that is over here and here well what we need to do is we need to find the individual mois of 1 2 3 right with respect to centroidal x x sum them up and you're going to get this final value and in the same manner you have to find the individual mois okay of all the three rectangles with respect to this y y axis sum them up to get the value of this final moment of inertia or the total moment of inertia and this is something that we're going to be following so here we go okay i g1 and this this should be written as x moment of inertia of rectangle one with respect to its own centroidal axis and if you have been following my previous videos moment of inertia of a rectangle with respect to its own centroidal x x is equal to bd cube over 12 where b represents the width and d represents the depth of the rectangle remember that so here we go let me write this in a better way okay i g1 x 5 into 1.5 cube 5 multiplied by 1.5 cube over 12 plus its area how much is the area let me see the area is 7.5 7.5 multiplied by okay y corresponds to the vertical distance between the two centroids those two centroids are number one is g1 itself that is centroid of rectangle one and number two is the main centroid so the vertical distance between this main centroid and this g1 centroid is something that we are interested in and that is this value y okay and it has been formulated very easy y1 minus y bar so what you need to do is y1 is 0 0.75 just punch in the value everything will fall in place don't have to worry about anything y1 minus y bar y bar is how much that's 5 and you need to square this up punch all of these all of these uh, values into a calculator and the final value of i x x 1 that you guys are going to have is let me see 136.88 well that's done 136.88 well unit centimeter raised to the power 4 that's it in the same manner we have to deal with this rectangle 2 also so guys watch this this rectangle 2 is having the value of b as 1.5 the value of d as 7 so 1.5 multiplied by 7 cube let me write this 1.5 multiplied by 7 cube divided by 12 plus the area well, how much is the area um, area is 10.5 okay 10.5 y2 minus y bar again if you watch carefully this y is nothing but the vertical distance between the two centroids that is centroid g2 and main centroid g and you can clearly see that there is literally no vertical distance between the two centroids because they are in line in a horizontal line sort of therefore the value of y over here is going to be zero and you can verify that y2 minus y bar 5 minus 5 done 5 minus 5 and that's square and the final value that you guys are going to get is 42.88 rather 42.88 centimeter raised to the power 4 done okay now let's go ahead and let's try to work out the MOI of rectangle 3, this one, with respect to this central x, x. Okay. Let me write this once more. Width is how much? 5 into 1.5. 5 into 1.5 cube over 12 plus area is, again, this is 7.5 and value of y3 is 9.25 minus 5. 9.25 minus 5 and that's um, square now punch in all the values and the final value of i x x 3 that you're going to get is going to be same same 136.88 136.88 and when you put all these values all these values into this equation main equation the final value of the moment of inertia of this c section with respect to its own centroidal x x is going to be equal to let me see 316.63 centimeter raised to the power 4 and that's done now we're going to go ahead and find the moi of the c-section 
with respect to this that is centroidal yy so first of all we individually need to find the mois of all the three rectangles with respect to this centroidal yy and here it is here you can clearly see right now we have to focus on calculating the horizontal distance between the centroids here we go let me write this in a better fashion now the formula is will invert here we used bd cube over 12 and here we are going to use a db cube over 12 so it's going to be something like this 1.5 into 5 cube 1.5 into 5 cube over 12 plus area will it's 7.5 and x1 x1 is how much let me see 2.5 minus x bar is 1.78 1.78 and it's square and when you punch in all the values the final value that you're gonna get is well 19.51 centimeter raised to 4 done uh, this value 2.5 minus 1.78 you can see it here also this is the main centroid okay this distance is how much this is x bar and this is the centroid this is that is x1 so x1 minus x bar or x bar minus x1 both of them I'm going to give you the same value because ultimately it's going to be squared up. So it makes no difference, negative or positive. Okay. Now let's worry about this rectangle, rectangle 2. So it's going to be 7 multiplied by 1.5 cube. Okay. Exactly opposite to this. Let me write this in a better fashion. 7 multiplied by 1.5 cube divided by 12. All right plus area area is how much that's 10.5 and the value of x2 is 0 0.75 minus 1.78 and square it up and the value that you're going to get is 13.11 13.11 centimeter raised to power 4 and finally let's worry about this rectangle 3 okay Again, it's going to be very simple. 1.5, invert this. 1.5 into 5 cube. 1.5 into 5 cube. DB cube over 12. 1.5 into 5 cube divided by 12 plus area is how much? That's 7.5. X3, value of X3 is how much? Let me see. 2.5 minus, this is going to be 1.78 and it's square. So when you punch in all the values, the final value that you're going to get is 19.51 centimeter raised to 4. That's it. And when you put all these values, all these values over here, well, the final answer is moment of inertia of this C section, of this C section with respect to this YY is equal to 52.13 centimeter power 4. Well, that's it. Done and dusted. Okay, so guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of engineering mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel, and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. Well, I'm going to be back as always with a new video and with a new concept. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day, and keep learning.